hello everyone and welcome welcome to our Toko Inside, a cryptocurrency and blockchain podcast that we hope could bring insight and positivity to you guys. And we're proudly present by Toko in Indonesia. And we want the listeners to learn and have knowledge about crypto and blockchain industry in Indonesia itself. And I'm not here alone. I'm with my partner here, with Jasper. Okay, Jasper, please introduce yourself. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Jasper, yeah. and I am part of Top Point Host. So, same with Anissa. Yeah. Yeah. But actually, mm-hmm. we have an interesting person here <laughs> today. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Let me introduce mm-hmm. myself. My name is Anissa Fishina Marizki, or you guys can call me Fiji. I am from Tokyo, Indonesia, and we are here together to host this podcast with our CMO, Chief Marketing Officer Hello. of Tokoyen, Mr. Andrew Yadi. Please welcome Mr. Andrew Yadi. Hi. How are you? Hi guys, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm good as always. How are you guys? Like, how are you, Jasper? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, uh, actually, this is our special episode, yeah. Yes. Because you know, this is, uh, can we call this is our first podcast? Uh, yes. And, yeah. This is our first oh. first podcast. This is a Toko Inside. Uh, from the name itself, we can tell that. Um, from Tokoin, we want to deliver our insight about cryptocurrency and blockchain industry. So, without further ado, let's continue to our first topic. The first topic would be about crypto in Indonesia. Okay, Mr. Andrew Yeti, or I, I just can, I mean, I can call you like yeah, uh, just call be Andrew friendly, you know? <laughs> yeah, call <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> because Mr. Andrew is like very professional, but let, yeah. let's make this podcast very casual. All right, so um, call Andrew, how long you've been in crypto and blockchain industry, and what made you really? I mean, like finally decide that okay, I decided to commit it in this crypto and blockchain industry. So it's kind of interesting that I learned about crypto when I came back to Jakarta after I was studying for a while in Singapore at, on 2015. So at that time, like one of my friends actually invited me to go, go to a seminar about crypto. All back right. then it was hosted by currently Indodex CEO, Oscar. So last oh, time Oscar, I think they were yeah. called, I think they were still called Bitcoin.co.id. Yeah. So after I went to the seminar, I had a talk with Oscar himself. We actually had a meeting together in our office, learned more about crypto. And since then, I've been quite very interested actually in crypto. So throughout the years, I've been trading myself. I've been trying to learn about crypto. And throughout these recent years, crypto has evolved tremendously, I would say. Like right now with all the DeFi, with the Binance coming up, more and more exchange, more and more IEO, ICO and stuff like that. So it's really interesting. So what made me actually join Tocoin is like because I believe that it's one of the leading blockchain company in Indonesia. And what we strive for here is actually implementing blockchain in Indonesia, not to only help the businesses around, but also as helping the community to grow, teaching people what is blockchain and how we can all benefit from this technology itself, because I really think it's going to be game changing, you know? Yeah. Wow. So, it's a game changing for us there. Yeah. All right. So, so Jasper, please continue. Okay. So, uh, Andrew, so it's like, it's been like around six years. Yeah. In this mm-hmm. industry. And I think you have learned many things in crypto because crypto, I think it's not just about the coin. It's a huge, uh, like the industry, the technology, the blockchain behind the crypto, right? And personally, yeah. Yeah, personally, I I joined this industry uh, recently, maybe 2021, uh, around late January. It's been mm-hmm. five months. But I can say that uh, I learned many things in this short period of time, and and we know for sure uh, uh, that uh, the the crypto hype in the last six months is so wow. It's like I can say that the the, the development of the crypto is growing so fast in this past six months. So 
uh, how's your response or perspective regarding the crypto hype in the last six months? Like we saw this happening basically last time during the 2016 and 2017 where the amount of traders and the interest in crypto actually escalated so much in our country back in Indonesia, you see. So we see this again happening this time around. So what's my perspective over it is that Indonesian people are riding the wave, I would say. Like a lot of the formal movement, a lot of the like, oh, uh, let's pump, let's go to the moon and stuff like that. So <laughs> it's kind of mixed pers- mixed feeling for me in a way like people need to be know what they want and know what they invest in. That's what my perspective about investing in crypto as a whole. So... I wouldn't like where people like, oh, I just buy because my friends tell me so, or I just buy because I think it will go up and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. So the, the very important thing is to really know what you're investing in, right? Because you cannot yeah. really just buy something that you your friends like recommend you about because that is the same as gambling, right? Yeah, in a way. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I know. Okay, because uh, the most important thing is to, to do your own research or do uh, like mm. DYOR, right? Yeah, DYOR. Okay. And all of this mm-hmm. is non-financial advice, of course. <laughs> <laughs> NFA hashtag NFA, NFA, okay. Hashtag NFA. <laughs> okay so um, the next question is from me so what's hmm. the best strategy for beginner investor I mean like beginner retail investor like most of us maybe okay so for myself mm-hmm. I actually invest a lot in stocks as well before I go to learn about crypto so i think most of the fundamentals is there i always believe that do your own research why is it very important to do your own research is because when you know what you're buying into when the market say the market is very red like what we saw in the recent weeks right it gives you kind of like a defensive mentally whereby like, hey, I know what I'm buying. I'm not going to be affected by the flood. I know what I'm buying into. I know like where is this going or where I hope it's going to go. Of course, our research is not always going to be right, but it kind of gives you the mental defensive perspective whereby like, hey, I know what I'm buying. And secondly, I would always suggest to do a dollar cost averaging, whereby we buy at a certain point when the price goes up or when the price goes down at the end of the day holding is always better in my experience because like what you hold in the long term is it's usually it will grow like we saw what happened throughout the pandemic crash throughout every major crash of the history in all the investment basically you know so and through my own personal experience, like a lot of my friends is actually trading, like trading kind of like, yeah, a while here and there, you might be profitable. But if you are not fully into it, you don't understand what you are doing. It's difficult, you know. So do your own research, do not FOMO and know what you are buying into and hotel guys. All right. So, so you better yeah, hold it. For me, I think team holder strategies mm-hmm. As, uh, and not just FOMO and just not in Indonesia you call like uh, no yeah. all in all in I mean <laughs> FOMOing is FOMO is like makes kind of greedy you know like in a way like when people are FOMO 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 they went in went in went in and then like one like bad news come out and everyone is stuck there you know it's it's I know. You, you don't know what you're buying into at yeah. some point when the price is going up so crazy. You, uh, in Indonesia, you say nyangkut, yeah? It's like... Yeah, sangkut yeah. no, you know. Sangkut <laughs> Sangkut <laughs> okay. That's a very, um, very common term in Indo, though, because yeah. a lot of people actually like FOMO and they uh, bought in the dip, or maybe you can say that beli di pucuk, and then after that, just crash because like sometimes we need like 
correction, right? Yes. All right. Okay. So, so continue, uh, Jasper, uh, please. Uh, Okay, so we know that uh, crypto is not just about the price and etc. We know the technology behind the crypto, which is uh, the blockchain. Uh, what's mm -hmm. your view? What's your view going through in blockchain in the next five years? Okay, so blockchain, like I said uh, during the start of this interview, I think it's uh, technology-wise, blockchain and crypto is two different things, right? So we have to know that crypto is just one side of that evolves from blockchain technology, you see. So what blockchain does is actually is more transparent, it's more efficient. Everyone can see what the record was or like had been recorded through the blockchain technology itself. So in the future, just imagine, just imagine if we could have businesses transact on blockchain not we they don't even need to be on crypto itself you see like so like the legitimacy of their pnl the legitimacy of their credit line and stuff like that is all transparent where people all can see and it's proof uh kind of like you know it grows their credibility in a way so i think the future is going there that's what Toko coin beliefs as well. So interesting. Right. Topic. That's very interesting view from you. All right. So, but nowadays we hear that there's a decentralized finance and decentralized uh, exchange as well. But from your perspective, can you explain us about um, decentralized finance maybe in the future? What's your thought about it? Okay, so for DeFi itself, it's kind of like you can think like how bank operate in a way, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like our traditional bank operates, like bank taking your savings, bank taking your de deposit and stuff like that. They are not just going to let the money brought there, right? Mm -hmm. So they're going to lend it out to people. So what DeFi actually does is that allowing guys like us, guys like you guys and everyone else whereby we don't have so much capital or whatnot to be able to do that we can lend people based on blockchain contract where it's all clear where the criteria of the repayment the criteria of borrowing is all clear like you can't change that you see so it's it helps in a way whereby like everyone could get access to loans to fluid cash, I would say, uh, like liquidity and stuff like that. It helps in that way, you see. Like a lot of people whereby uh, we saw what happened in El Salvador and stuff like that. You see, like people, we saw like the banking is very little, right? So not everyone could get the credit card. Right. But on DeFi, we could, everyone can, you see. No minimum amount is required to do that and the reach is like basically global right i mean mm. as long as you are on an exchange or whatnot so it's global mm, so, uh, okay so uh, when, uh we already talked about the technology and now we will talk about in indonesia we know for sure mm -hmm. that uh in Indonesia, there is called UMKM, which is uh, micro, small, micro, small, and medium enterprises. And we believe that MSME is uh, play a huge, important role in our life in Indonesia. So, how uh, MSME be able to take advantage of blockchain technology? Okay, so how SMSE could benefit from this, like I mentioned before, also it can increase. And it's actually one of the utility of our token, you see, to increase the credibility of an SMSE to help them to be able to, let's say like uh, an SMSE wants to get a credit from the bank, how would bank know if they are credible enough and stuff like that, you see? So like the use of our token is actually to legitimize that. Like, hey, look, all my transaction, all my income, all my accounts receivable is all on the blockchain. 
you know so it increases the credibility there and it's also like you don't have to manually type in like oh uh i'm gonna buy this i'm gonna sell this it's all recorded the moment the transaction happened so that's how we want to help it become more efficient it become more effective um Quendru. so you already mentioned about crypto industry in Indo before and I want to talk yep. about something more specific so could you explain a bit about Tokoin since you are the CMO of Tokoin itself right and then what is the goal of building Tokoin please do explain okay so the goal of mm-hmm. building Tokoin is to introduce the blockchain technology to Indonesia itself to help all the mm-hmm. small medium enterprise to be able to be more efficient to be able to be more effective basically as we also saw the uprising of basically all the businesses now is like going towards digitalization mm-hmm. we can see that many unicorn industry arise arrive from indonesia itself you know with gojek tokopedia and stuff like that so the future uh, that we are trying to build and why we built uh, tokoin is to introduce the blockchain in uh, technology to in indonesia for all the msme and also we would further like introduce DeFi. we would further introduce the nft we are something that we're working for in the future oh that's cool because yep. we see that in the market that define M- nft is like rising right all right mm-hmm. so please jasper continue the questions Okay, so we know that you just joined the uh, Tokoin as the new C- CMO, right? And yep. Yeah. By the way, congratulations, Quen. Thank you, uh, thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> thank <laughs> We're you. Happy for you. So, okay. uh, what's your initiative for Tokoin Growth? So, uh, my first initiative is to bring Tokoin name recognized more globally. I am going to be more building more partnership, I would say, with entrepreneurs and companies alike globally. And this does not only come from the crypto or blockchain industry itself. What I want to try to bring here is a fresh, mm, I would say a fresh look to what Tocoin is. So it's not and close to like, or whereby we only have to collaborate in the crypto or blockchain industry companies now we can go beyond that because the utility and the acceptance of crypto is going way beyond the industry itself right now okay. so. all right i understood so much okay so the next question would be um what's uh what is your two points plan for the future expansion are you going to do partnership with uh, global projects or what's inside of your i mean what's your plan about it oh uh, what's my plan for the future expansion of token yeah yeah okay so the future exp- uh, expansion is of course we will be always innovating number one mm-hmm. uh will f- closely follow up and trying to be the innovator of this space for Indonesia, for global, for everywhere. And also we would like to more partners, I guess. Yeah, more partners. Uh, there's some few exciting partners that I've been talking to and working on, which I cannot share it now, but in the future, it's going to be huge. Like we have reached almost uh, global in global. That's our target right now. Mm. Okay. So, Koendru, uh, uh, when we talk about Tokoyen, one of its product is Toko, right? Yep. Um, That's our native token. Yeah. So, Uh, could you explain us more about, uh, let's say, about its utility or its use case of Toko? Okay, so the utility of Toko token at first is to access the data that the SMSE use. So, like we would say, like when SMSE use our system, they can get 
Toko token itself. And when people wants to access those data, they need to use Toko token as well. All right. So of course, all this happens only if the SMS actually allows them to uh, see the result. Uh, I mean, see the data. All right. So, but then mm -hmm. right now it evolves more towards the DeFi, towards the airdrop loyalty program, and of course, it's used in our own ecosystem. You see, we have uh, the token itself is evolving. I would say we started from helping the blockchain, but it can evolve into maybe next time NFT. Right now, we are working most on DeFi, and we recently are supported to uh, with the Binance Smart Chain Network, right? All right. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, I just launched the bridge um, together with Binance, right? The BSC Binance yeah. Smart Chain. Correct. Uh, so now amazing. our token is available in BSC BB Network. Is a lot of people will ask why, you know, like why Binance, and of course we will see like Binance is like the top global exchange and stuff like yeah. that. And but it also mm -hmm. saves up a lot of fee actually whereby mm -hmm. like the smart contract and fee on Binance network is way cheaper than Ethereum. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something to help and give our user choice, I would say. Mm -hmm. So it's a sign of commitment from us to the users to be always evolving, always trying to strive for the better. Okay, well say. All right, so we already talked about Toko and Toko in itself, but then where can I buy Toko and which exchange, which exchange? Can you um, explain us a bit or tell me, tell us about that? Yep, so uh, Toko is actually <coughs> listed on three exchanges. It is mm -hmm. on KuCoin, KuCoin. X Big Tax, and Biki. And you can okay. also buy our token basically from our app itself we have a wallet and of course uh recently we announced an, uh, quite a big announcement i would say that we oh. have been selected by kucoin lab as their partner mm -hmm. uh, so kucoin lab is basically an investment vehicle firm of kucoin themselves my team my ceo and my ceo has been working closely with kucoin since the start of token basically so it's very exciting we will release more news soon about the partnership maybe in a couple of weeks so stay tuned guys it's gonna be really interesting because with this partnership basically it allows us to reach way more uh avenue and partnership globally all right, that's a very interesting announcement from our CMO, um, Mr. Andrew Eddy, or we can call him like Ko Andrew from the yeah. <laughs> You just give it like casual, yeah, in this podcast. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, could you please give us like a summarize about our first topic, which is like crypto in Indonesia, please? Andrew. Okay, so crypto in Indonesia, we have to understand that crypto and blockchain is two different things. Yeah, like I would say again and again and again. So mm -hmm. we have to firstly understand what are those. Tokoin, it's uh, for crypto itself, is the native token that people trade in, whereby blockchain is actually a technology crypto is based in so the crypto industry in indonesia is going to evolve we're not just going to stay here we are behind all the other neighboring country like let's say singapore or vietnam even you see so crypto in indonesia is going to evolve as people understand what it is all right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. as it understand as it gets more utility as it gets more acceptance it will grow and we are a huge population here. And we have not even talked about touching the NFT space whereby like Indonesian artists is so recognizable around the world. I would say like musicians or like artists uh, and stuff like that, you know? It's mm -hmm. lots and lots of interesting opportunities actually. And the penetration in Indonesia for crypto and blockchain is minimal right now. Mm -hmm. 
So the future is going to be great, you know. Okay. So we're still in the early stage of the we are early guys. Growth. Yeah, we're yeah. still early. As um, many people say that crypto right now is like Google in um, late nineties or early twenties. So we still have like a lot of growth uh, space yeah. from that. Like, like yeah. we saw actually, I actually retweeted this tweet from uh, CZ, the Binance CEO, whereby like people yeah. were slamming the internet back then. Like people yeah. are afraid of change, you see? So like mm -hmm. change is something inevitable, I would say. Maybe mm -hmm. we are not there yet, we are not ready for it, but doesn't mean it will not happen. Okay, so please continue, Jasper, about our um, uh, summarize about uh, yeah. topics, second topic. Okay. So, uh, Kwendo, we have talked about Tokpo, about Tokpoin, and etc. Uh, can you summarize uh, the, the discussion that we have before about the Tokpoin? Okay, so this discussion about Tokpoin, Tokpoin is basically a blockchain company from Indonesia. Mm -hmm. We are helping the SMNC and we are also going to help many other companies uh, locally and globally using the blockchain technology. And we also have our own native token, which is Toko. We are listed on KuCoin, BitMEX, and also on Biki under the ticker TOKO, Toko. So go check it out. And we are currently working on launching our DeFi. We are currently mm -hmm. also, we not currently actually, we already ported to BSC network. We're working with uh, the Binance network. So it will open up a lot more opportunities for us. And we will always try to improve. We try to listen to our community. What feedback do they have? Yeah. So let us know. We'll try our best and we'll keep working hard, guys. All Toko right. to the moon. So, Toko to the moon. Toko to yeah, the moon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hold right. it, guys. Hold it. Yeah, I just hold it. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Andrew, for sharing with us together yeah. and the Toko Inside podcast by Toko In. And then I just want to let you guys know that we are available um, on Toko In Indonesia group on Telegram. Please do join our Toko In Indonesia group at t.me um slash tokoin underscore indonesia or you can you guys can see it here um the link down here and join our tokoin global group at t.me slash tokoin global and then don't forget to follow our instagram at tokoin indonesia and please do follow our twitter for the recent news at tokoin global yes that's um that's from us from tokoin indonesia and do you guys have like another thing to add mm. you guys got it. well do do support us and we'll always try to improve we'll always try to listen to you guys and our yeah. community mm -hmm. actually means a lot to us as well because yeah. it's the reason why we are doing this you see the reason mm -hmm. why we are doing this is because for our community for the guys who trusted in us for the guys who's going to use us and well be aggressive in learning and mm -hmm. do your own research guys <laughs> yes dyor is very important DIY all right guys yeah uh, we do really value about our community and please do join our um, telegram group because there we usually have like announcements um every week and uh, yeah just keep connected with us all right uh, thank you so much thank you so much thank Jasper. you thank you so much andrew thank you so much the team and Please, yeah, connect with us and see you next time in the next Toko Inside podcast. Thank All right. you. See you. Bye. Bye.